Hey, it's Guilherme and this is the second part of our Quest System series in which we're going to see how to connect our API to our UI elements and also how we handle the starting and delivering of quests. If you haven't already watched part 1, please do so so you can better understand what we are doing in this video. Our quest journal rests inside of our GUI scene, so we're going to open this scene. And currently, this is the only element that we have inside of our container besides of our quest button that is used to open and close the quest journal and also to give the player some visual notification that one of his quests has been updated. So let's begin by opening the GUI script. Here, we begin by connecting to the updated signal of our quest journal. And when that happens, we are going to call wiggle element and pass to it our quest button. This is going to configure and start a twin that is going to wiggle our quest button. And whenever this button is pressed, we are going to play an animation to slide our quest journal up or down, depending if it's active or not, and remove focus from it if we are closing the journal because we don't want it to interfere with our controls inside of the game. Now let's go back to the 2D view and take a look on the structure of our quest journal. The quest journal itself is pretty simple. We have a VBox container which holds our title and a tree. And this element is the one responsible to displaying the information regarding the quest that we have inside of our game. Now let's open its script and see how it works. On our ready function, we begin by reaching out to our quest system and for each available quest that we have, we connect to their started, completed and delivered signals. And right after that, we initialize our tree. When we start a quest, we have to add it to our quest journal and we do so on the onQuestStarted function. And this is done by using helper methods that we created to add new tree items. This means that for each quest that we have, we're going to add a root item which is going to be the title of said quest. And as a child of this root item, we are going to add the quest's description, its rewards, and as you can see, we're using the get rewards as text function that we saw on the previous video, which is a method that returns us an array with the rewards of the quest nicely formatted to us. And again, for each one of them, we're going to add a new tree item as a child of our quest root. And as for the objectives of our quest, we also connect to their updated and completed signals. This way we can update our UI when either of them happens. And finally, we add a new tree item again as a child of our quest root. And finally, we emit a signal that our quest journal has been updated. The add tree item function is a helper method and its goal is to add a new child to one tree item and return to us the newly created tree item. We receive some parameters that help us configure our tree item. And by having this encapsulated inside of a function, we don't have to keep repeating. As you see here on our quest started, we have add tree item in several parts of our function. And if we didn't have this function, we would have to type this all manually. And this would make our code not so readable and also harder to maintain. When an update happens on either our quest or our objectives, we have to find the correct tree item to update its text and display the correct information to the player. And we do so by using a metadata. This metadata is going to hold either the quest itself or the objective itself. And then we can use this later on to compare the objective or the quest that has been updated and update the correct tree item with the new text or icon or whatever it is that we are updating. Now continuing, when an objective gets updated, we receive that objective as an argument and we look for it using the find objective tree item. And in the case that we find it, we are going to set its text with the new text of our objective. And as I just said, we are using its metadata to find the correct tree item for that objective. The same goes for the objective complete, but in this case, we also update its icon. Now, when a quest gets completed, we do pretty much the same that we did with our objectives. We again use a helper method to find the correct tree item for that quest. And then we update its icon and emit a signal that the quest journal has been updated. The same goes for the quest delivered. And finally, we have two methods that are, again, helper methods that help us to find either a correct quest tree item or an objective tree item. They are both loops that loop through all of the tree items of our tree and try to look for the correct metadata to return to us the correct tree item. With this in place, we can play our game and see how our quest journal is looking. Now, if I press on the quest button, you see that it slides up and down. And if I go near this NPC and press enter to start a new quest, we get that visual clue on our quest button. And if I press it, you now see that we have a test quest here, which is the title of the quest. And when I expand this quest, we get the description of the quest, the rewards that we're going to get from that quest, and also our objectives. In this case, it's only to slay three porcupines. You have probably noticed that our bubble also has changed. 
And when I finish the quest by killing the three porcupines, you can see that we have another NPC showing to us another quest bubble that alerts us that we have a quest to deliver to this NPC. And if we open our quest journal, you can see that our objective has been completed and updated correctly. And now I can go to this NPC and deliver the quest. And again, we are going to get that visual clue on our quest button. And here everything is completed. Now let's see how this interaction with the NPCs works and how we can get new quests and also deliver them to NPCs. Both starting and completing quests are done using map actions that are added to our interactive pounds. Let's begin by taking a look at our quest giver and to do so we're going to go back to our game scene, open our local map scene and here we're going to find the test quest giver which is the NPC that we have to talk to in order to get a quest. I'm going to open its scene and as all of our other NPCs, this NPC inherits from our interactive pound. And the only difference is that on our actions, we are adding to it a give quest action. This is the action responsible to give a quest to our player. And the only exporter parameter that we have here is a quest reference. This is going to define which quest the player is going to start when he interacts with this pawn. Let's open its script. We begin by getting the real quest from our quest system by using the quest reference that we got as an exported variable. And when the player interacts with this NPC, the interact function is going to be called from it. We first check if we have already started this quest. If not, we are going to check if this quest is still available. And if that's the case, we're going to start this quest and emit a signal that we have finished our interaction. The active bool is set to false on our own quest started function, which is called when our quest gets started as we connected it to the started signal of our quest. With this, we can close this NPC and go back to our local map. And here we are going to look at our test quest receiver which is the one responsible to receiving the quest that our player completes. Once again, it's an NPC that inherits from our interactive pawn. And instead of having the give quest action, instead we have a complete quest action. Here we once again need a reference to the quest that is going to be completed when we speak to this NPC. And I'm going to open the script to this action. And here we once again get the real quest from our quest system by passing to it the reference. We set our active boolean to false, and then we connect to the completed signal of our quest. When this quest gets completed, we set the active boolean to true. This means that the player will be able to start this interaction. And when he does so, we are going to access our quest system and call deliver and passing to it as an argument the quest that we have to complete. We then set the active to false and emit the signal that this interaction has been finished. The last piece for our puzzle is our quest bubble that stays on top of NPCs to notify the player if it has either a quest to start, started, or to deliver. Let's open the quest bubble scene. The root of our scene is a position 2D, and we have an animated sprite that is used to change which sprite we're going to display to the player based on if the quest is active, it's available to pick up, or if it's available to deliver. Now let's open its script. We start off by hiding the quest bubble and playing our wobble animation. And this scene gets initialized by the interactive pounds and receives as an argument the quest actions or in other words complete quest actions or start quest actions that the NPC has as a child of his actions node. And for each quest action we are checking if it's either a give quest action or a complete quest action. We then check if they exist because again this NPC might have a complete quest action and a give quest action or just one of them. If we do have a give quest action we're going to connect to the started signal of this quest. And if we do not have a action complete, we are going to connect to the completed signal of our quest. And when this happens, we are going to hide ourselves. And finally, we are going to show the quest bubble. But in the case that this NPC also has the complete quest action, we are going to connect to the quest completed and delivered signals and perform actions based on that. Now, when we start a quest, we are going to change our animated sprite to display the quest active sprite. When we complete a quest, we are going to show ourselves in the case that we are hidden. This might happen if we only have an action complete and again change our sprite to the quest complete sprite. And when we finally deliver this quest, we are going to stop our animation and hide ourselves because we don't want to show anything to the player. And with this, our quest system is complete. We saw how to create the quest system API and also how to connect it to different aspects of our game, be it UI elements or our command programming pattern that we use on our NPCs to either start or deliver quests. As always, you can find the repository for this project on the description of the video. Keep in mind that we are using Godot version 3.1, so you won't be able to execute this on Godot version 3. Also, I'm a bit sick, so sorry if my voice sounds a little bit different. 
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.